Alright guys, welcome back to reading through of the notes too. Um, we recently just got done with chapter 2, we're going to start chapter 3. Things are going a little haywire right now, and uh, the vibe is starting to get uncomfortable like it did before. Um, the last thing we read, Jin got in a car accident, and uh, we know all about how bad the accidents tend to be in this storyline. So, the next chapter will be finding my own place keeping the places for each other. This entry is by Nam June, June 12th, year 22. <clears throat> After our trip to the beach, we didn't call each other. So this is about the time that like the the, the lack of communication started, right? And uh, when Jungkook was in the hospital and, and J-Hope went off on his little like adventure with the theater group and stuff. So we, we kind of have like a time setting here. After our trip to the beach, we didn't call each other. I knew what everyone would be up to. Yungi was probably cooped up in his workroom in Hoseok, was going back and forth between two-star burger joint and dance room. Jungkook was waiting for school vacation to start, and Jimin had probably left Hoseok's rooftop room and returned home. I was also trying to maintain my daily routine by working hard at the gas station. We all had our own life to live, and things that were urgent or important to us. As if nothing had happened, we were returning to our places. From time to time, I remembered what Young had said at the beach. To be truthful, I was often reminded of his words and tormented by them. His words also brought back the memories of the village in the countryside that I thought I'd forgotten. On that stormy winter day, what had Young? now, what had Jong Hun wanted to tell me? If I had listened, would things have changed? And if you remember back to the notes one, um, what's his name? Jung Hun was the guy that took over his shift and ended up in that horrible accident, right? And so he's he's flashback, he's got a flashback going to that moment and kind of wondering what wasn't said. What did Tae Young want to ask me that day at the beach? Tae Young didn't seem like the, his usual self looking serious and desperate, as if there was something he must do. I didn't stay to listen simply because I got scared, not because I was reminded of Jong Hun. I kept my distance because I didn't want to hear his desperate request and be put in the situation of having to choose either refusing or ignoring the request, the way I had always done. I felt pathetic. With my head hanging low, I left work. Before I left the countryside village that winter, I went to Jong Hun's house. I had nothing to say, no apologies to offer, no truth to convey. I just felt that I should. Maybe I wanted to tell him it wasn't his fault, to offer my condolences and share their grief. I didn't think it would comfort them in any way. Maybe I just wanted to feel more at ease about it. So it was, maybe Jong Hun wasn't his name. When I looked up, I saw Tae Hyung's graffiti by the bus stop. Tae Hyung had been arrested once for painting there. Even at the police station, Taehyung kept smiling and responding with guff and got reprimanded by the police more because of it. I asked him when he got out of the station, What are you so happy about? Taehyung said, There is no reason not to be happy. The weather is great, the graffiti turned out awesome, I ran like hell with you, and we got arrested together and got out together. I laughed in disbelief and seeing that, Taehyung laughed himself silly. I added then, when something worries you, don't keep it to yourself. I probably cannot take care of it, but I can be a good listener. It's good advice. And I meant it. For someone like Tae Hyung, who was kind and down on his luck, he needed someone to lean on, even if that someone was nobody like me. When I said it, I really meant it, but it ended up being a lie. I took out my phone, looked for Tae Hyung's number. You busy? There's a place we should go together little space and time, right? Little little breaking of the uh, the paragraph signifies a, a movement in time, right? Okay. The village in the countryside in broad daylight looked exactly the same. The old road signs, the empty road, and the stream flowing to the river. Only the season had changed. Taehyung got out of the bus and stretched. The bus left kicking up dust. A scooter sputtered on its way to the part of the village with the rest area. During the bus ride, I had told Taehyung about what had happened, the delivery competition I was in to make a living, the accident on the day of the snowstorm, and how Taehyung was killed, and how the village people had reacted to his death. Some things I couldn't tell him. I ran away leaving my family behind, and the last words of Taehyung. 
Did I regret what had happened? No. There wasn't anything I could do. I didn't come back to apologize for the past. I came back to see for myself what it meant to have survived. The only thing that was on my mind when I'd left this place. I headed to the slope to get to the rest area. It's too hot for June, Taehyung said. It's going to get hotter. We chatted ab about unimportant things on our way up the slope. I pushed Taehyung to continue when he gave up, and leaning against me, he bent his head backward. The sun was too bright that we couldn't keep our eyes open. I stopped at where Taehyung, no, where Jong Hun had died. This must be the place. The mark on the side of the road was long gone. I lay down on the spot where Jung Un had been killed. With my eyes closed, I tried to picture his last moments. When did, the, when did his scooter skid? It had been a while since the snowstorm, so the empty road must have been covered with heavy snow. When the scooter skidded, Jung Un must have grabbed tight onto it. The scooter wheel slid on the calcium chloride, and he lost control. As the scooter fell and his body was thrown into air, what did he see? When he crashed onto the frozen road without a helmet, what did he think? With his dying breaths, what was the last thing he saw? With his quivering lips and white puffs from his sighs, what did he want to say? As his body became frozen stiff, the blood from his head must have been warm. Enveloped in the chill from that day, my body contracted. The black space in front of my eyes scattered into whiteness. Taehyung muttered something, but I couldn't hear it. It felt cold and heavy as lead. My mind grew distant, as if I had been buried under the snow. I thought once, I'm like a dead person. The night when I was walking home after the trip to the beach, when I ignored Taehyung saying he had a favor to ask. What did it mean to survive? Being alive. Having a place to sleep and food to eat. Waking up in the morning and going to sleep at night. Spending each day like that. Not getting involved in the fear that I wouldn't be able to handle the responsibility. Turning a blind eye, afraid of re regretting it later. Not doing a thing in order to not to die. Not doing a thing being trapped inside myself. Not doing a thing and not doing a thing. And continuing not to do a thing. How is that different from being dead? I must have died a long time ago. Oof. Oof. God, that hits home. That hits home. It's like you're in charge of your own destiny, but like when you do nothing, you're guaranteed to not fail, but you're also guaranteed to not succeed. So it's almost as if you failed anyway. <sighs> Steep. Okay. The scooter sputtering in the snowstorm, the road covered with dead leaves and calcium chloride, and the drops of sweat in the winter wind. The scenes that day on the road unfolded like a film. And as if I had been suspended in the midair, I looked down on it. So he's basically it's like seeing it all in his head, right? My body evaporated and only my consciousness remained. It was a hot summer day, but I trembled from cold. It felt as if it was snowing. I felt the pain in my thigh from the scooter accident. Jung Un was not the only one who died on that winter day. I ran away, but I also died that day. To survive, I had to kill myself. Kind of what we just covered, right? Nam June! I heard Tae Young's voice and someone shaking my shoulder, hearing his voice. I finally snapped out of it. The chill I had been feeling vanished, and I felt the heat from the asphalt. I opened my eyes to see Tae Young looking down on me. He seemed dead. I grabbed his hand and stood up. I took out the piece of the scooter headlight from my pocket, placed it on the road. I had picked it up when I came here that winter. I said bye in my head. Suddenly, Tae Young put his hand down on the road where I had been lying and said, we shouldn't die. Wow, it's like he knew what he was thinking, dude. Okay, so we got another break in the page, which means another passage of time. On the way down to the village by the river, we stopped at the entrance. The place was high enough that we could see the whole village. Taehyung picked up a stone and threw it into the river. The stone flew in an arc and plopped into the water. For a while, we stood there looking at ripples where the stone had disappeared. What's on your mind? Taehyung asked. Without a word, I pointed to the horse near Selkova tree. Taehyung didn't ask whose house it was. Someone opened the door and came out of the house. My mom. My mom, with a towel around her head, placed some stuff into a straw basket and disappeared into the house. I had known Taehyung for a long time, but I had never invited him home. Not just Taehyung, 
I never brought anyone home because of my sick dad, but also because I didn't want anyone to know how I lived. Maybe because I didn't want to admit it, even to myself, the state that I was in. Are you going to go? Hearing Tae Young's question, I shook my head. Shaking his head, Tae Young said, Man, that's harsh. If it was me, since I was here and all. But it's like you. Mean and cruel. Mr. Know-it-all, who never listens to others, never shares his worries, tries to solve things all by himself, makes sacrifices all by himself, acts like a grown-up by taking all the burden, and can't even tell other people about it. I just did the eye thing because that's what the dots mean. <laughs> Awkward silence. Tae Young stood up, still needling me, and pretending as if nothing I did would stop him, I followed him. We ran down the slope. Unlike when we were walking up to the place, the sun didn't feel too hot. With the wind blowing behind us, going down was much easier. The sun was setting on a day in the early summer. After we passed by an orchard on the outskirts of the village, I stared at the house with the blue gate. It was Jung Un's house. No one lived there now. The last time I came to see my mom, she told me that they ran away from the place. The small village also wanted to forget Jung Un's death. Something felt boiling up inside me. I pulled my shirt tighter, although I had no means to button it. Are you okay? Tae Young asked. Instead of an answer, I said, You said you had a favor to ask when we were at the beach last time. Tell me now. Let's see if we can handle it together. I saw the bus coming our way. At that moment, Taehyung took out his phone, and with a startled look on his face, he said, jung -ook. So we're reaching the time of the accident, right? And this explains Taehyung and Namjoon's bond a little bit more, right? But this could be an alternate timeline, so this could just be like a whole new story, right? I don't know. Alright, next up, sucked in as an entry on the 13th of June, year 22. I walked past the front door and saw a couple of shoes. I asked the housekeeper, and she said they were from the Scholarship Foundation. I looked in my dad's den. I knew what they must be talking about. I knew what the people from the foundation, including my dad, were, were up to. Funny how I knew their future, which they themselves didn't. The redevelopment plan which they were having such a heated discussion about would start on the 20th and the demolition of the containers would begin on September the 30th. When I went closer to the den, I saw Uncle John Jono eavesdropping by the door. I heard a voice from inside that the plan should be implemented faster. He was the president of Youngjin Engineering and Construction. The redevelopment plan was led by the Foundation members. The Foundation pursued academic progress and equal opportunities, but in reality, the goal was to realize profit using their power and money. Sound like any typical businessman. In the process, they kept things out of sight, giving illegal favoritism to some. By manipulating the votes, they won the right to a construction job, changed the building plan, and signed a contract under the table. Needless to say, my dad was in the middle of it all. Uncle Jun Ho was his right-hand man who made the deals and handled all the details. Dude, there's some shady stuff going on with, with Jin's dad. He sounds like a crooked businessman. <clears throat> I called him uncle, but he was not related. He was my dad's junior in college, and I grew up with him because he started working for my dad when he jumped into politics. Ah, politics, that explains everything. Okay, Uncle John Ho was my dad's aide, but he gained our trust by handling not only my dad's work, but things around the house as well. Hearing my dry cough, Uncle John Ho stepped away from the door, surprised. To hide his embarrassment, he asked me when I got home. He wasn't ambitious or had a great dream. He just needed money. In one of the time loops, he got into trouble and got arrested because of money. He probably knew everything already of the things he was listening to by the door. He was eavesdropping because they were deciding on something which was important to him. I saw Ho Suk's text when I turned around from Uncle Jun Ho and headed to my room. I closed the text. Ho Suk had found out about Jung Ook's accident just then. It wasn't important. Ooh, it's kind of harsh. It wasn't important. I tried to prevent the accident from happening, but also fretting over when and how the accident took place. So the accident kind of seems to be a center point, like a centerpiece to all the time loops. Because it happens in every time loop, which usually dictates that that's like either the destiny of the time loop or the thing that needs to change. And in, in this case, the price seems to be 
kind of related to, to what he's paying for in each time loop. But I realized Jungkook's accident had nothing to do with the loop. <laughs> okay, after all that. It's just one of those accidents that could happen to anyone. When you leave your wound, it heals by itself and things go back to the way they were. You get scars or disability, but that is your problem to deal with. Even if you get killed in an accident, there's nothing one one can do about it. After that huge spiel, we get hit with that little bit of information. Gotta love it. Okay. The notes, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Jungkook has an entry on the 13th of June, year 22. When I opened my eyes, I saw Hoseok and Jimin's faces. Every time I blinked, their faces kept appearing and disappearing again. Are you okay? Are you in pain? Jimin asked. You should have called us. That won't mean anything to you. Hoseok sounded upset. I had woken up in the hospital two weeks ago. They said it was ten days ago when I had had the accident. I came to, but with pain. Because of the sedative, I felt numb all day and couldn't remember things even from moments ago. I couldn't tell what was real, what was a dream, what was a memory, or what was an illusion. Everything seemed faint. And I would have dreams. I'm floating in midair, and when I look down on the hospital bed, I see another me. The me on the bed is asleep. He must be dreaming because his eyes move under the eyelids, and out of the blue, he opens his eyes, and our eyes meet. In the next moment, I'm lying on the bed, dreaming about the night of the accident. The headlights become the moon, and change into marble-like green and blue lights. When I open my eyes, I see another me floating up in the air, and our eyes meet. We exchange glances, and our consciousnesses switch. I become the one in the air, and the one on the bed. Switches, switches happen faster, and I become dizzy and nauseous. It's almost like the... the consciousnesses are like blending right like all the all the realities and time loops are starting to blend and i wake up panting sweating and feeling nauseous and i remembered something i had forgotten a voice saying it'll be more painful to live than to die are you okay mom called the doctor to ask about me the doctor said i was recovering and there was nothing to worry about i had fractures and contusions and did not suffer from any bleeding I was lucky considering it was a car accident. Who hit me though? I asked. The police officer answered that question a couple of days later. He showed me the surveillance camera of the accident. In it, I was thrown into the air after being hit by the car, and then I dropped to the ground. The car disappeared from the screen, and I couldn't tell whether it stopped or not with its red tail lights barely visible. And a couple of seconds later, the light disappeared as well. The officer said the car rammed the guardrail after hitting me. And he asked me if I remembered anything. At that very moment, the voice struck my head. It'll be more painful to live than to die. And the night of the accident replayed in my head. The headlights zooming down in my direction. The car that I saw as I was thrown up in the air. The shock of crashing down onto the asphalt road. And the taillight growing faint. The officer asked, are you feeling okay? Do you remember anything? I looked at him. I realized it was Suk Jin's car. The officer said, even if it's a small thing. I shook my head and said, no, I just have a headache. So he knew? He knew? <sighs> and I can't even, like, be shocked because, like, what if this is an alternate timeline, right? Like, what if this is an alternate timeline? But isn't the alternate timeline, like, more or less the same thing? Oh, so many questions. Okay. Yoongi's entry on the 13th of June, year 22. I went to see Jungkook in the hospital but couldn't walk into his room. From the hospital door he looked dead. I turned around, couldn't bear to look at him. I remember this part of the entry from the last book so maybe this is an alternate timeline. Ever since we, we came back from the trip to the beach, Jungkook stopped showing up at my workroom and I tried to remember the last time I saw him. The last time was when we were coming back from the trip. I was talking to Hosuk about music. Without a word to us, Jungkook ran ahead. I thought he had something to do and would show up later, but he got into an accident. So many things reeled in front of my eyes. The fire cack crackling in an empty drum, the can at the construction site, my mom's room always with no lights on, the piano sound coming from the flames, Jungo clumsily playing the piano at a music store, Jungo falling on the empty road, and the fear and pain he must have felt as he slowly lost consciousness. Jungo was lying in there, looking like a dead person. I staggered out of the hospital. I drank. I had to be liquored up to forget this fear. 
I got kicked out of the bar and roamed the streets, and I fell down somewhere on the streets and slept. When I woke up, I was running. No, I was having that dream of running. But I wasn't a kid. I was a high schooler, and I was running in the dark streets, and it was urgent. <clears throat> There's, I'm seeing like I didn't think there was gonna be a lot of footage that I could use for this, but I'm like seeing a lot in my head from different clips that I've seen. So this hopefully won't be as boring as just me reading. I didn't look around. My feet were running to take me to the destination. Where was I going? What was the urgency? It felt like this had happened before, but I couldn't remember, and I lost my balance, and sprained my ankle. When I was thrown off and fell headlong in that dream, I woke up kicking my feet. It was night. Because of the booze, my heart was pounding and things were spinning around me. When I tried to stand up from the crumpled position I had been in, my joints screamed. Holding onto the wall for support, I managed to walk. I had no destination. I didn't care where I was going. The passers-by frowned and avoided me. I was always like this. I had no destination and no purpose, and there was no way I would run now just because someone told me to run. And the people around me found me upsetting and scary. Staggering around, I suddenly looked around. I was on the road where I had run out of breath in my dream. Where was I going in such a hurry? What was I looking for? No one told me to do it, and no one was chasing me, but why was I running like that? I saw the green light across the crosswalk. In the dream, I crossed the road, although the signal had turned red. Cars honked and some came to a screeching halt. I ignored all that and ran with my eyes fixed in front of me. Like in the dream, I started to pick up speed. I felt nauseous, but I took deep breaths and I crossed the road. For no reason at all, I, fe I felt urgent and started to run. It was nothing like the speed I had in my dream, but I still ran. And I saw before me the same scene from my dream. I ran past the elementary school and the police station and I crossed the road. And what was I seeing now overlapped with the scene in my dream. I got a break in the page, which is a space and time, right? I arrived at the front gate of... Uh, Songju Jail, Jail High School. The place I ran to in my dream was my school. The place I hadn't set my foot in after I got expelled. I couldn't believe it. I looked up at the classrooms. The lights were on in every classroom. Brightly lit classrooms were not a part of my high school memories. In the dream, I ran past the dark playground into the classroom turned storage in the old building. When I opened the door, it smelled dusty and smoky. The desks were thrown down on the floor everywhere and a pile of boxes was in the corner. I stood by the door and looked inside. It had been two years since I spent most of my days here. Was I a different person from back then, or was I still the same? Was I the one who came running and panting here in a dream, or me from back then? I saw the piano in the opposite corner. It was a thin layer of dust settled on the piano, which had not been touched for a long time. I brushed off the dust with my hand, and when I opened the top, the white keys shone faintly in the dark. I brought my phone and used it as a flashlight. I pressed down on a key. The key made an odd sound. A note that was between notes. It was the same with every key. The untuned piano lost its voice and became out of order. I plopped on the floor. My arm with the burn wound that had not healed yet chafed against the piano, sending a twinging sensation. I remember Jungkook in his hospital bed and the house burning down in the fire, and I heard a piano melody over those images. What was I running away from? From a person? From an attachment? Memories? Music? Myself? In retrospect, I have had happy moments because of Jungkook, Taehyung, and the other friends. Moments I didn't think I could have. And this classroom turned storage was part of it. Had I ever laughed from my heart since then? Had I wanted to stay alive since then? I touched a piano leg. The piano wood being old and rustic felt rough in my hand. And when I tried to stand up, I suddenly remembered. There must be a music score here somewhere. I bent over the piano, rummaged through what was under the piano frame with my hands. The scores were buried in the corner. I had forgotten. I put them there. I couldn't throw them away or keep them. Music. The scores piano and myself and I remember it that night the day I came running to this place the day when my expulsion was decided the day when I was given the verdict that I was no longer allowed in this classroom I got drunk and feeling desperate I came running here I didn't know why I felt so desperate then it was fear without this place 
I would never do or play music again. I was desperate to find out that that would not be the case, so I would come running and panting to open this classroom door. I stood in front of the piano, I gingerly pressed the keys and some more keys. The odd melody spilled in, into the dark room. My heart was still pounding hard. Sweat trickled down my temple and fell onto a key. What should I play? What was the next note? My heart faltered. Should the next note be sharp or flat, or a variation of the melody? Feeling as if someone was judging my music, I swung around, played a couple notes, a couple more notes, but I couldn't focus. What was I feeling? I couldn't figure out what was making me so muddled. I was afraid of pressing down on the key and it seemed impossible to play. The piano was pushing me away. I pressed down on the keys harder, meaningless notes echoed in what used to be our lair. I got mad and started to press any key and screamed. That was not the emotion. Suddenly I stopped my mom and said that. The words I hated to hear most. I tried playing the note that had disappeared in my life. I couldn't move my fingers. It was the note that was everywhere in my music scores. The note that I didn't even think about when I played the piano with my friends. The note that I couldn't play anymore after being made to dread it. I couldn't remember what I felt that night. I could have felt hopeless or felt like giving up. I returned to my place and threw away my mom's piano keyboard that I had uh, salvaged from the burned down house and I decided I would never play the piano ever again. In hindsight, it was a stupid thing to do. Nothing changed just because I had thrown away my mom's keyboard. I couldn't stop playing the piano or giving up music or give up music. But since that day, I hadn't played that note. The note was nowhere in the music that I wrote. I realized why I had been so mean to Jungkook when he came to see me in my workroom. He kept playing that note. Why did he do that without knowing anything? I looked down on the scores under the piano frame. I played a melody that was on the scores and it sounded strange from the piano out of tune. A strange sound became a strange melody and strange music. Memories of high school days trickled out with the melody. Hosuk was playing around, hugging me from behind as I was playing the piano. He said, you should play the piano properly, with your hair parted right in the middle and an expensive suit on. To that, Jungkook said, I'll buy you a, a bow tie on your birthday. When I told him to piss off, Jungkook and Hosuk pretended as if they were scared of me. Nam June, who was reading a book by the window, said, hey, slow down, Yungi is a super slow runner. Suk Jin, chuckling with, at what Nam Jun had said, took out his camera from his back, and Jimin smiled as he made a pose for the camera on the piano stool, together with the future music maestro. <laughs> Everyone's laughter filled our lair, and Suk Jin captured it all with his camera. I recorded that day in my own way, the day when we'd all laugh together, the happiest days of our lives, and the time we spent together. It was in my music. And after playing a note, I stepped back from the piano feeling as if electrocuted or my fingertips were on fire. For a moment, I was cut off from all my memories with my hands frozen in midair. Chills went down my back. It was that note, the one that I'd thrown away with my mom's keyboard and made disappear from my life. Oof, oof. The imagery, bro. The imagery, okay. I rummaged through the scores. The note was everywhere. Back then, I had no qualms about writing that note down, but back then, I used that note without giving it a thought. The note I thought had disappeared from my life. I remember what Jungkook said, it's because I like your music. When I listen to your music, I want to live. What I'm saying is, your music is like what's in my heart. I saw a flashlight outside the classroom. I ducked under the piano top. A security guard said, who's there? He came in and looked around. A ghost was playing the piano or what? I sneaked out while he went to look at the other side of the classroom. I ran to the hospital and walked into Jungkook's room. Namjoon and Taehyung turned and said, Are you drunk? <laughs> what way to end that entry? Okay. So, we finally figured out what's going on with Yoongi, right? Like, he's just like... He's always been kind of dark and mysterious, we haven't really heard much of his story, but to hear it be filled out, at least in this aspect of this time loop, whatever it may be, uh, it kind of gives us some depth to his character in the book. More than just, like, entries of observation, you know? 
All right, this next entry is Jimin on the 14th of June, year 22. How do you like being back home? Musuk asked as he showed up at the Just Dance practice room. He sounded indifferent but looked worried. Ever since he paid a visit to Jungkook in the hospital, he had been down. Behind him, I saw cars whizzing by with headlights on. If the seven of us could really become one, Hoseok would be like our guardian, always taking care of us, but he wasn't really as carefree or outgoing on the, out on the inside as he seemed on the outside. He acted that way because he thought that's how he should or ought to be more or less. He responded more sensitively to the pain and hurt of the people around him and he suffered because of it. And he tried to liven up the mood more because of it. Do you know why I went back home? When I said that, Hosuk turned around. He said I wasn't honest about my narcolepsy and I felt ashamed, but I felt encouraged at the same time. Hosuk smiled. He smiled. Hearing that, he waved his hand and adamantly denied he'd done such a thing. <laughs> I left him and got on the bus. I saw him growing distant and thought. What I said to him was half true and half not. He seemed pretty cool as he came clean about having told lies, but that didn't help me muster up courage. So he confessed to him that it was all a ruse. Okay, I remember that. It had been a month since I ran away from the hospital. I went back home, signed up at, at Hagwon for the high school certificate program became a member of Just Dance. While I struggled to adapt to the world, time flew by. I hadn't had a fit, but on days that looked rainy, I became terrified. Am I really okay? I thought looking at the night streets of Songju. I had been locked up in the hospital for two years because the people decided that I was sick, and that decision was still valid. After I ran away from the hospital, my parents officially had me discharged, but that did not mean I had been cured. The symptoms were simply lurking inside me like a monster catching his breath in some alleyway. When I got off the bus and walked into my apartment complex, the air felt moist. I rubbed my arms and walked on. Am I okay? Am I really okay now? Questioning your sanity, dude. That's insane. Doesn't really make sense, but okay. Nam June. Year f uh, Nam June, 15th of June. Year 22. When I got to the containers, I saw a small shadow crouched next to one. It was a little past 11 at night. There was a range of people living in the containers. Some were alone like me, and a single mother was raising her baby. I heard one man had a gambling debt and was hiding from loan sharks. Not conducive to creating a good environment. The area was littered with booze bottles and cigarette butts, and it sank into darkness as soon as the sun set. Not the best conditions for children to be growing up in. On the way back from the trip to the countryside, Young told me about a nightmare with us in it, and how it almost became a reality. Sakjin, cold and impassive, was helping us, but he seemed to have forgotten about us too. And Young added in the end, You don't believe me, do you? I was the same way. No one knew what Sakjin had been up to ever since we came back from the trip to the beach. I remember how he showed up at my gas station all of a sudden after two years. If what Young said was true, it wasn't a coincidence that he simply showed up that day. He had come to help me then, and Taehyung's dream ended here. With me getting killed in the container fire. I walked over to the child. Your grandma is not back yet? He shook his head. Then let's go to my place and have instant noodles. The boy gobbled down the hot noodles. Your name was Wu Chang, right? Song Wu Chang. The boy nodded and asked, What's your name? I'm Nam Jun. Do you gamble too? Me? No. An alcoholic? I couldn't believe what he had just said, and with a sigh I said, There are a lot of people here who make an honest living, you know. Wow. Think about this, that kid. He's a kid. And he knows about, like, the hardships of society and adults. And no kid should be subject to that knowledge, at that age anyway. And have to deal with those problems, but this kid in this position technically has not worse off than Nam June, and it kind of humbled him to hear that kid ask those questions. Probably scared him too. So, J-Hope's entry, June 16th, year 22. This is not what I ordered. When I looked up, I saw a customer with a hamburger on a tray looking irritated. Embarrassed, I checked the order slip, but a part-timer placed a different burger on the tray and said, I'm so sorry, ma'am. Hearing that, I also bowed an apology. The part-timer threw a glance at me. Something going on with you? 
This had happened so many times lately, making me embarrassed in front of the part-timers. I left the counter, and from the window, I watched students in school uniform passing by. I remember Jungkook in the hospital bed all bandaged up. I had yelled at him for not letting us know, but I didn't mean it. In my mind, I kept seeing the orphanage aunt, whose surgery was coming up soon. I looked around the burger joint. It was crowded with people enjoying their burgers, chatting and laughing, but I felt frustrated and helpless. Jimin's entry, June 17th, the next day. I crashed onto the ground after colliding with someone. I had just come out of the Hagwon to study for the high school certification. Startled and scared, a boy looked at me and burst into tears. I helped him stand up and said, it's okay, it's okay. I noticed his knees were scraped and bleeding. Seeing drops of blood, I compulsively turned my head. Memories that I didn't want to be reminded of occupied my head. I bolted up and turned around. Someone asked if we were okay. I couldn't tell if he was asking about me or the boy. I gulped and focused hard. I felt a seizure coming on. No, I was looking for the signs to tell me I was about to have a fit. I was flooded with fear that I might have to go back the way things were, to the way things were. I started to walk fast and then to run. I rushed to escape from the place. I stopped out of breath. I found myself in an alley I'd never been in. I swung around to find no one there. Kind of cryptic. All right. Namjoon, June 18th. When I asked him if we could meet, Sokjin took his time but said yes. We met at a street pub near Songju Station. It was the end of a weekend and the people at the street pub had no intention of going home. Now, we remember from the first book that they were at the pub and things didn't really go well with the conversation. So maybe this is a filler, maybe this is the same thing happening on a different timeline, I don't know. From the pub, I could see an old, decrepit commercial building waiting for development. A few places like that were left in Songju. A couple of middle-aged men came out of the street pub across the road and walked away, singing. We gulped down our first drinks even before they brought us the side dishes we ordered. How are you doing? Sukjin answered without any emotion whatsoever. He didn't tell me anything of himself and didn't ask about me or other friends. The pub owner brought us the side dishes, but we didn't touch them. When Taehyung had told me those strange stories, I couldn't believe them and felt a sense of foreboding. I know known Sukjin, and I was close to him, but who is this person in front of me now? When was the first time he drank? I asked him with the cup in my hand. Sukjin just looked at me and I began telling him my story. When I turned the corner to my house, I saw our furniture and kitchen things piled up on the ground. I was carrying my dad on my back from the hospital when I saw our stuff dragged out of my house. Now I'm June. What should we do? My mom said desperately. Apparently my brother got into a fight with the landowner's son when they showed up for the overdue rent. Fortunately, the supermarket owner let us stay in a storage room next to the market. I laid my father inside and carried our stuff to the room. When we were done, it was night. My mom placed chopsticks in my hand and told me to eat something, but I couldn't swallow a thing. Seeing all our stuff stacked up in one corner of the storage place, I just wanted to drop dead. I walked out and sat on a bench outside the supermarket. My mom asked me where Nam Hyun was. I yelled at her. How should I know? Nam June? Nam June. Nam June. I was sick and tired of everything. I regretted telling my brother he should always hold his head high. We could get by a couple of days on a storage room. But I didn't know what to do after that. I was blank. Then the supermarket owner handed me a can of beer. That was the first time I tasted booze. I was 16, I think. Sukjin listened emotionally. Isn't that funny? And I asked again. When was the first time he drank? I don't know, he answered, not wanting to be bothered. I said, when you came to see me at the gas station for the first time, why did you ask me to look into Jungkook? Sukjin frowned a little, as if asking what was the point of all this. Turning his head around, he spat out. Just because I thought it would be nice to see everyone. He was lying. That night, when we had all decided to get together at the container, he refused. Our conversation came to a stop, and when I brought up our days at high school, he would change the topic or react with irritation. He was not the person I used to know. He wasn't interested in us and was impassive to our memories together. Have you heard of the map of the soul? He suddenly asked. It was the first time ever for him to ask me something at the street pub. What is that? Is it a map of some place? Something I have to find? Something that can end all this? He didn't finish. And he shook his head 
as if he shouldn't have said it. Oh, he messed up, bro. He's spilling the secrets. Okay. When we came out of the pub, it was close to midnight. He turned around after a short goodbye, and I said to his back, I thought you were like me. He looked back very briefly and walked on, and I watched him as he walked away. I knew the first time Suck Jin had drunk. It was in my second year of high school. We skipped classes and snuck out of school only to get ourselves into a scuffle with thugs. There were four of us, Suk Jin, Jimin, Tae Hyung, and me. The end of the scuffle was obvious. None of us knew how to fight. We got our asses kicked, and when the thugs left, we were panting under the bridge by the Yanji stream. Jimin went and bought cans of beer, or was it Tae Hyung? Suk Jin opened one clumsily. We cheered half in anger and half in frustration at having our asses kicked and guzzled down the whole can. And we ended up spending the rest of the day drunk and flushed, talking gibberish, falling asleep, and waking up again only to talk gibberish again. This is my first time tasting booze, Suk Jin said like a confession. Someone asked him, is there anything else you haven't tried yet? You can do it all today. Suk Jin had thrown a punch and drunken booze for the first time, but he didn't remember that day at all. Okay, 18th of June, this is Jin's entry, right? I, I'm guessing it's the same thing. Maybe these are his thoughts. <clears throat> he says, A time loop is funny. Namjoon and I had a drink in one of the time loops at the street pub where we were drinking now. Kind of thing happened often in time loops, where I turned a corner, always met the same person, and when I woke up one day, it was always raining. Things that were fated to happen did happen. Sometimes everything got tangled up from one tiny mistake. It made me think that maybe we were... No. Everything in this world was bound with a sturdy rope, supporting everything else. It was impossible for one person to figure out how that rope was tied. I didn't want to know it in the first place. All I wanted was to avoid making errors and mistakes and escape from the time loop. Kind of a nonchalant way to say string theory is a thing, but okay. As I expected, Namjoon talked about some useless stuff. Maybe that was what Tae Young had told him to do. I thought you were like me, the last thing Namjoon had said. My, my head ached again. I remember what Namjoon had said here at one of the loops. Now I know everything about you, but don't you think your friends are still waiting for you? Without understanding what had happened back then, what he meant by back then was back in high school days when I had to spy for the principal. I couldn't believe stuff like that was still important. Two years had passed since then, and I had had experienced countless time loops. Back then, it had happened ages ago, and it meant nothing now. Yeah, he's losing his self in time, dude. It's crazy. Okay. Jungook, entry, June 20th, year 22. A witness had stepped forward. The detective came to see me again a couple of days ago. He asked me for my guardian, but my mom didn't come to see me that day. He had no choice but to tell me that the witness had come forward, but had not provided much information except for the car was imported, and the driver was a young man in his early or mid-twenties. The detective asked me if I remembered anything, and I said, nothing. It was a lie. What are you thinking about? Hustick said, standing next to my bed. I stopped by on my way to the practice room. How are you feeling? Feeling better? He had the worried look, which he always had. I nodded and said, They say I can walk around with crutches now. Ozuk smiled and took out a burger meal. A special burger set for you. It's called Tyrannosaurus Burger. You know you've got hearty bones like a Tyrannosaurus. <laughs> Short arms. <laughs> um... And our conversation turned into real life in the hospital and school things. He said Namjoon routinely stopped by a library on his way to the gas station. But he didn't know why Tae Young was busy. How about Suk Jin? I waited for the right timing and asked Suk Jin. But Suk changed since high school. He was not good at hiding his feelings. Something is up with him, isn't it? But Suk flushed, looked somewhere else, and said, No, no. I thought he knew something, and that Suk Jin was somehow involved with my car accident, and I remembered the first time they came to see me in the hospital. Even then, I felt they knew something. You feel hurt? Should I call a nurse? I was like said in a worried voice. I didn't know it, but I was bracing my head. Hmm. Okay. Jimin's entry on June 23rd, year 22. 
I simply had my eyes fastened on my name as it appeared on the screen in the waiting room. With the scent of rain, I couldn't calm myself down. Afraid of bumping into someone I knew, I had my head down. My vision was filled with an endless line of shoes. Someone barefooted with slippers and a patient gown. Someone with wet shoes and someone trudging along with an IV. Only when I had run down the stairs did I take a long breath and sigh. I stood in front of the emergency door for a while. Maybe I wasn't ready. When I got to the first floor lobby, I saw rain falling down outside and remembered that I'd left my umbrella by a bench in the waiting room. As I turned around, I saw a familiar face in the distance. It was sucked in. I wondered why he was there. I remember how he'd scowled and rubbed his forehead the whole time on the way to the beach. Even after hearing about Jungkook's accident, he didn't go see him in the hospital. Was he too sick to pay him a visit? When I was about to say hi, he greeted someone, a doctor in a white gown. I was close enough to overhear their conversation. If your headache is too serious, you should get an MRI exam, the doctor said. Suk Jin nodded and said, Doc, have you heard of the map of the soul? I'm not sure. Is it a psychological term? The doctor apologized for not giving him a definitive answer as Suk Jin said it was alright, and the two disappeared around the corner. The map of the soul? I'd heard it before, but where? When? I couldn't remember. Alright, Hosuk's entry, June 23rd, year 22. Okay, there's a lot of multiple mini entries in here, so bear with me. Alright, the first is a, is a regular entry by J-Hope. Contrary to the forecast that there won't be much rain, it had been raining for days. It was on a day before final exam week. It's slowest time to a t slowest time at Two Star Burger, with the main store in Munhyeon. Two Star Burger was branching out nationwide with a plan to open a couple of stores in nearby cities. Would you be interested in working at a new store as the manager? It was a tempting offer. They said by working at the company operator's store, I'd have a chance for promotion as well as educational opportunities. And I saw a text from Jimin while I was thinking about the offer and watching the rain out the window. The conversation goes like this. Jimin said, do you know what map of the soul is? A map of what? What's that? And I'm guessing this J-Hope responding, right? Jimin asks. Jimin says, I don't know, but I've heard it somewhere. Have you? Because I've been thinking about working at the company operated store, I couldn't make heads or tails of what Jimin was saying. Jimin says, I saw Suck Jim by chance. He was asking a doctor about the map of the soul. I've heard it before, but I can't remember for sure. Would Taehyung know? And how about the others? Jimin invited Taehyung, Nam June, and Yoon Yi into the chat room. So now I have a group chat going. Taehyung says, the map of the soul, what is that? And Jimin explained again about what he had heard at the hospital. Nam June responds, what Sok Jin asked me about that a couple days ago. He said he had to find it in order to end everything. Taehyung says, then it must be something awfully important to him, but in what though? After Taehyung's text, everyone went quiet until Yoon Yi wrote. And Yumi says, why bother talking about it ourselves when we should just ask him? It's a good question. Nobody said anything, right? Yumi's entry, same day. I closed the chat room. I looked up at the ceiling. The map of the soul. Sokjin. Memories. Help. I had said, why bother talking about it by ourselves when we should just ask him? But not because I didn't know the answer to my own question. We had realized it at different times, but we all noticed it. Something was wrong with Jin. We'd hung around together since high school, but I didn't really have many memories of him. After I got expelled, I'd not seen him or thought of him often, but he was on my mind, as if we'd spent many hours together or gone through many hardships together. Not only was Sok Jin, but I felt this way with every one of them. With the rain and high temperature, it felt wet and stuffy. When I stood up to adjust the wind on the fan in the workroom, my whole body ached. I left home a couple days ago. I didn't do it on a whim, but that was how it had started, freeing myself from my dad's judging eyes and from my mom's spirit. I wanted to see myself with open eyes. I saw dad as I was walking out of the house with a pack with a bag packed with my stuff. I told him I no longer needed financial support because I was officially going to live independently. Dad was quiet for a while and said, text me from time to time and let me know you're doing well. After unpacking my bag at the workroom, I thought about what to do now. I had to make money. I decided to get manual work, and I chose the most physically demanding job on purpose. I went to work at a construction site. 
I decided to push myself to the limit. I couldn't trust myself yet. I thought I'd work during the day and write music at night, but it didn't go the way I'd planned. When I came back after work, I usually crashed. The map of the soul. If there were a map of my soul, what would it look like? The road I'd traveled must have begun with my parents, meandered through adolescence with music and running, and got marked with an inflection point at the, at the fire and my mother's death. After that, it was the booze and smoking, feeling lost and having a death wish, and, come to think of it, my friends. How would the small things we'd done together show up on the map of the soul? Maybe now was another point of inflection, and the future map of my soul would draw my life from here on, the decisions and choices I'd make. Lying on the sofa, I closed my eyes. I hadn't even touched my music yet when I was overcome with sleep. Alright, Jin's entry on June 27th, year 22. I was about to leave school when, I, when it started to rain. The semester was over, but I had to deliver my dad's documents to my professor, the documents concerning the redevelopment. Everyone in Songju City who had any power all had their hand in the plan. The professor thanked me and asked me about my dad. What had started out as a sprinkle soon turned into a downpour. The radio said the rainy season would last longer, and the wipers pushed the raindrops to the edge. When I got to Songju City, I saw the intersection. On the right-hand corner, I saw a familiar building, the one that was still under construction. Two months from now, a flower shop would open in that building. They'd sell rare flowers called Smeraldo, a flower I learned about only because of her. When I thought of her, countless memories flooded in. The first moment I saw her with the gust blowing from a passing train, the time we'd spent together, and the moment of her death under the fireworks. That night, I left home looking exactly like the description in her diary, which I could have recited with my eyes closed. The accident of the truck delivering Smeraldo was an impossible coincidence. I hadn't ordered Smeraldo if she hadn't crossed the road after seeing me. The flower shop owner hadn't forgotten the message card I asked for. If I hadn't called the shop owner, or if, I hadn't made a, if it hadn't made a U-turn, the accident wouldn't have happened. She was hit in front of my eyes. She was bleeding. Tires skidding on the asphalt continued like a scream. Smeralda was trampled under my feet, and a time loop began again. See, here's what I don't understand. I didn't need just, like, forget the card. Like, you memorized what you're going to say by this time, right? Alright, blank space means passage of time. It says, when I opened my eyes, it was April 11th. For a while, I couldn't figure out what was going on. I thought that the loop had ended at the beach on May 22nd. What that strange cat said was right. I had saved everyone. Then why was I in another time loop, which was fortunate? I didn't know why the time loop had begun again, but it did. And I hadn't met her yet. She was still alive, and I could save her. It was not difficult to save her. I didn't have to make someone do something, nor did I require a precise, precise timing. All I had to do was make one small change among so many coincidences. Still, I took extra precautions. I controlled everything and eliminated all the variables, and I saved her. It would have been so convenient if that had taken care of everything. The problem came a month later, the night when the containers were forced out. Namjoon was killed, and the loop started again. Wow, he died in that. So the, I wasn't tripping when I saw the video, okay. I still couldn't figure out why the loop began again, nor why I couldn't save Namjoon. Every time he was killed, the loop began. And my relationship with her deteriorated for some reason. Some strange reason. I always did what her diary said. We went to have what she liked, the, the ice cream, and went for a drive to the lake place she had wanted to go, but with each loop she grew more distant. Odd things happened too. One day she and I were sitting by the Yanji stream and looking at the sunset. I was about to suggest volunteering at an animal shelter. We should stop seeing each other. I think we should, she said without even looking at me. How about we go for a drive? I said as if we, as if I hadn't heard her. I grabbed her arm and helped her stand up. Let's break up, she said, pushing away my hand. What's the problem? I asked, sitting by the stream, watching the sunset, and volunteering at an animal shelter. They were all in her diary, things she liked, and I did whatever she liked to do. 
but it always ended like this. In every loop, it ended this way. And she said the same things. I don't know who you are anymore. And you are not the person I fell for. She grew more distant. I was getting sick of it. After all the things I'd done, I couldn't figure out what I should do more. She stood up. I grabbed her arm. You're hurting me. Let go of me. Without meaning to, I put force on my grip. While trying to free herself from my grip, she lost her balance and sprained her ankle. I finally snapped out of it and let go of my grip. Grasping her ankle, she plopped down on the ground and said, You know what? You're becoming strange. I don't know you anymore. That's crazy, dude. So, like, nothing he's doing is... Because he did everything that I said. He he made it successful so that he could experience the time with her, but it still didn't work out in his favor. Okay. Next entry is J-Hope, July 4th, year 22. I was standing by the rail on the rooftop and looking down at Songju City. I like Songju. I didn't know where I had been born, but I grew up in Songju. The weedy area by the Yanji stream wasn't there anymore, but I used to play hide and seek there when I was little. And I spent my school days in the classroom turned storage room instead of attending classes. From time to time, I did wonder what world outside Songju would be like. A vast city with endless skyscrapers like in some movies, a huge plaza crowded with people. The continents with nothing but ice and snow and perpetual winter or people dancing on some fancy stage. Trains sparked my imagination the most. When I looked down from the bridge over the Yanji stream, Sanju Station seemed like a launch site ready to shoot out a train. When people got on those small rockets, the station launched them. Where were those rockets headed? Where would they pass through and where would they arrive? On the bridge, my mind would wonder and imagine these things. Did I want to leave Sanju? No. I would like to say this again. I like Sanju. But watching the trains, I would imagine a world. So many things had happened in such a short time. I met my friends again, Jungkook got into an accident, and the orphanage aunt became sick. When I was in the middle of it all, I hadn't realized, but now, that I was alone. Looking down on the lights of Sanju City, I felt helpless. I should be proud of the five-year-old boy who, with nothing but the clothes on his back and a bar of chocolate, had grown up to become this man. But it wasn't a big deal at the same time. If Jung Ho Suk had lived, not in Sanju, but somewhere else, would it have been any different? Would every Jung Ho Suk in this world be so helpless and meaningless? Ho Suk, how would you like working at a different store as a manager? I kept mulling over that offer. Then I looked up and saw the lights from the Yanji children's home in the distance. I told Jimin once that when a person is looking at a map or climbing up a high place, they always look for their house. How fortunate it was that my home was there, that there were lights. I could look out for when I felt as if I meant nothing. Good night, Sanju. Good night, friends. I bid good night to all who couldn't hear me and turned around. And that's the end of that chapter. That's crazy, dude. So a lot happened in that chapter. One of the main points that I see happening in that chapter is that everyone's getting a little bit closer to figuring out that something's wrong with Jin, right? And Jin, I think, has given up the purpose of his mission because everything he's tried has failed and he doesn't know what else to do. The only thing he hasn't done is to ask his friends for help. So... Where will that put him mentally? Where does it put everybody else mentally? And what does that mean for the next chapter? Hmm. Guess we'll find out when we get to it. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that chapter. I'll see you on the next one. Talk to you soon.